Welcome back to Razmafsar TV. I'm really happy to be back here on this channel to talk about another part of my research. And this specifically, uh, my this video is going to deal with two sorts um, of, um, which are attributed and one of them definitely belong to Nader Shah Afshar. These two sorts, two Shamshir, which are kept in Naderi Museum in Mashhad. I'm going to show you these pictures and who Nader Shah was, and uh, so we are going to talk about it. Is a, I mean, Nader Shah has been described as one of the best military strategists of Iranian history, which if you go to military um, history books and strategies, everyone, do, some, some of them even um, describe him as Napoleon of Iran. And um, because of his conquests, because he came into power after the fall of Safavid um, Empire and all those things. And I'm not going to go into historical detail about Nader Shah because we want to talk about his weapons. And, um, and I'm going to show you some uh, um, paintings or miniatures from Tariq Jangusha in Naderi. But mostly this video is about his two Shamshirs, which I analyzed. A good military commander, general, later king, and at the same time, someone sadly who need, I need to say is a controversial figure because of his cruel acts and of course uh, things which one cannot ignore when one wants as a historian to talk about him. But uh, let us uh, stick to his swords and his military conquests as of now. I'm going to share, I'm going to share my um, PowerPoint presentation I prepared for you here. Let me see. Okay. So let me go into presentation models. Yeah, okay. So this is going, I'm going to show you Nader Shah tomb and the Nader e Museum, which is in Mashhad, where I went and analyzed these uh, two swords and um, two Shamshir and also some other items, but um, so Nader Shah was, uh, the coronation of him was on March the 8th, 1736. And his reign ended when he was assassinated by some of his followers on June 20, 1747. So if you go to where I went, to, and I would like to thank our colleagues in Nader Museum and her, uh, Iranian uh, Cultural Heritage Organization who helped me. This is what you see. This is this um, statue of Nader. He's always depicted with a uh, here and in many uh, things you read about him. He had, of course, a heavy sword, which I'm going to show it to you. And also he's always depicted with a tabarzin, with a battle axe or with saddle axe, which you can see it here. This is in Mashhad, as you can see it here. And you see here, uh, these arms and armor presented, the sword, the shamshin on top. This is the Shamshir I'm going to show you, which I analyzed. Also the one below, I did it as well, but this is something which the, on top, we are going to talk about it specifically. This is all in the tomb of another Shah and also another museum in Mashhad. These are other pictures of this museum. If you're in Iran, you should really go and visit this museum because they have, you know, see the sword I showed you, you know, now is in the middle and there are also other swords, right? You can see that there. Uh, I analyzed the, these two top swords here, uh, which I'm going to show it to you. And also his boots and many other items are uh, depicted here, right? This is the sword which uh, I'm going to, sh which you saw back there. You know, this is the sword. I get, go back and show it to you again. This is the sword here in the middle. If you look at the picture on the left, and if you come here, the picture on top, because you know, they have different uh, um, demonstrations and displays. So I have these pictures from two different displays where the museum changed. So this is this one. Let me mention this. Don't be, you know, let's say, do not underestimate this Shamshir. First of all, it has a very simple look as he didn't 
prefer all these bejeweled things, which is not a Persian tradition anyhow. Simplicity is always through a Persian tradition. The emphasis should be on the blade. I have, I've handled hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of shamshirs. I don't know if maybe, I don't know how many, but really many in private collections and in museums. And I can really claim that I'm one of those few guys in the world who has handled as many Persian shamshirs. This is, in spite of these simple looks, one of the most efficient weapons I have seen and one of the heaviest swords, shamshirs, I've seen. 1,209 grams is only the shamshi, right? I'm, you know, without scabbard, without anything. And it's 101 centimeter. This is this one. I published also, this is published in my book, uh, Arms and Armor from Iran, right? This is in this book, which is published, which you can go and uh, uh, see, I mean, uh, and you can also obtain it if you wish from our, my website. And, but at the same time, I published also an article in the French magazine, Revue de Tehran. I would like to thank Emile uh, um, Gris. Um, and I published, about, uh, published this sort also in one of my articles in French about military conquests of Nader, which you can see on the left, that's why it's in French, but on the right is in um, English, which is from my book. As I said, it's Musée Naderi in Mashhad. And uh, you can take a look at that. It has gold inlaid inscriptions, which says, Shah Shahan Nader Sahib Qaran Hast Sultan Bar Salatin Jahan. The King of Kings Nader Sahib Qaran is the owner of time, which he later on was also is a, is a, a royal uh, title, which was also used for kings during Qajar period, has become sultan or ruler of all rulers of the world. I repeat, Shah Shahan Nader Sahib Qaran has Sultan Bar Salatin Jahan, the king of kings Nader Sahib Qaran has become ruler of all rulers of the world. Right. Um, let me just show this to you. This is from my book, Arms and Armor from Iran, the Bronze Age to the end of the Qajar period. This is this um, inscription on it. And interestingly, many uh, dated uh, and also many blades which were kept in the uh, Nadri Museum. And also you find in um, museums in uh, Khorasan province in Iran have this type of crucible steel, patterned crucible steel. Very interesting to watch that because, you know, once they are taken away and brought to private collections outside Iran or other areas, what, what remains for us is to guess, okay, this is from Khorasan, this is from Shiraz, this is from Isfahan, and this is all hypotheses we have. That's why we need to have a heavier emphasis in Iranian museums. Uh, for Persian blades, I mean, and for the analysis of Persian blades. You see that also we have a wrapping um, around uh, the bolchak, the handguard, which used to have surely a strap which you put around your wrist. We have also this, a similar material of wrapping around, uh, around the kolahak, which is the pommel cap. If you take a look at the blade, it has one fuller close to the back of the blade. In spite of that, one of, as I said, such a heavy blade, such a beautiful blade, such a sturdy blade, and shamshir it is. This is the second uh, sword. You saw that here also in the pictures be before, right? Let me see which one. It one, this one is exactly. This is the sword on top. And uh, this is says it is also heavy, but of course not as heavy as the other one. It's not that heavy. It's, I'm sorry, I wanted to say it's not that heavy as the other one. It is but sturdy blade, 778 grams without scabber and total length is 95 centimeters. And it says, as Rekhobi al-Sultan Nadir Shah means it serves 
at Rekabi, means at the stirrup, at the saddle, as a saddle weapon of the ruler, King Nader. You see that it has these um, downward quillings in dragon heads. We say it already in Timurid period. And we talk about Nader and his conquest. He always took the model for him as military ruler, Chinggis and Timur. Sadly, um, I mean, he also, let's say, yes, did lots of cruelties, maybe because his role models did the same. But, um, well, that's what we can read a lot, a lot about it, especially towards the end of his rule. But what is really um, important to know, again, he reunited the Iran fighting different enemies, being Ottomans, then Persian Gulf, and, and, and uh, lots of military engagements. Then he went and sacked Delhi, which we know that, and uh, it was a very sad event anyhow. And um, so, and he fought in many areas and uh, fighting um, different uh, people. You see that it is made of crucible steel. Again, the crucible steel is a, at a very, blackish, bluish, but it's a faint, but beautiful crucible steel. This is, uh, this is this one. And then you can see it here, for example, um, you see it has a Yalman, as we call it, or as our Turkish colleagues say, Yalman, the raised back edge, or Hushe Shamshir, as it's called in Taide de Besarad. And it's also a gilded floral design on the gold inlaid floral design on the Ochak. And it has multiple fullers. You see that the ohanak, the tank bands, are also decorated with a gilded floral design. So let me just uh, go ahead. Here is from Nader Shah II. And this is a battle axe from Afshari. It's not attributed to him personally. Possibly it is um, his battle axe. Look at the beautiful um, crucible, patterned crucible steel. It's a magnificent heavy axe. If you need more information, please, on this axe, check my book, Arms and Armor from Iran. Another battle axe from Afshari period, which is kept in this museum, is this one. It's a Persian poem. If you read that, Tabarzin Bekhun Gasht. And if you want to know that, please check my book because I want to emphasize on these sabers, on these shamshirs at the moment. And this is a, another Tabarzin from Afshari period, chiseled, beautifully chiseled, also made of patterned crucible. Still, so this one is kept in a military museum in Sadabot's complex which belong to um, the personal collection of, um, of Nasreddin Shah Qajar, right? Remember the military museum inside of what complex, military museum of Tehran. But it's Afshari period. And this is what I meant, what I wanted to mention to you. I'm going to show you Tariq Jahangu Shai Nadiri. Later on, I'm going to make a special video on that. Um, the History of Nader's World Conquest by Mirza Muhammad Mehdi Astar Abadi. So it was written by him, by Mirza Muhammad Mehdi Astar Abadi, the son of Nasser, who was the secretary of Nader Shah until the, his death in 1160 Hijra, in, meaning 1747. Astar Abadi wrote about the conquest and rule of Nader Shah in his manuscript. He finished it in 711, excuse me, 71 Hijra, meaning 1757 almost a Gregorian year. And one of the advantages of this manuscript, as I wrote, is there, it has 14 illustrations, paintings, whatever, that depict battle scenes in a very realistic manner. And you can learn from these battle scenes about the armor they wear, the techniques even they use, because there are lots of details there. The first one, or some of them I put it here, the battle between Nader on top left, Nader, Shah and Afsha, uh, Ashraf, uh, it was the Afghan ruler at Mehmandus, close to Damghan. Um, then you see the second one, the battle between uh, the Persians, Iranians, and Afghans at Murchehor, right? And then you can come here, look at the left side, look at the techniques they show. 
uh, Nader against Ashraf in the Battle of Zargan. And number four, look at it. Uh, it's the siege uh, of Herat. And you can see Nader is uh, on a horse, on horseback, right? And the prisoners are uh, brought to him with uh, hands uh, tied behind the back. You see that? And um, if you come here, this painting on the left shows the battle between Nader and Ottoman Pasha, the general Ottoman. And you see that? And then six, this number six shows Nader um, and the battle between Nader and Abdullah Pasha, the general Ottoman. And um, the Persians, the Iranians won this battle against the Ottoman army. And you see that the, um, yeah, well, the corpse of Abdullah Pasha is at the feet of Nader's horse in this picture. Look at the armor here depicted, look at the fightings. And you can hear on the left side is, uh, the painting shows the siege of Kandahar and look at the artillery shooting, right? And another one is on the right, it shows the battle between the Battle of Karnal in India, Hindustan, and the Persian army um, is fighting against the Indians here, right? And here, the last one, I put it here for you. Um, the painting shows the battle between Nader and Ibrahim Khan, uh, the emir, the ruler of Haraz, right? And Nader is again on horseback. So you see that these are some pictures from this. Again, these are, I showed you two Shamshirs. And if you need more information about them, please check my book. All the dimensions are there. And it is really magnificent to have these um, swords in my hand and to um, analyze them. If you need more information on them and you would like to know more, please uh, check my book. And in my book, you can uh, find more information about this sword. Um, as I mentioned, this is uh, in my book, Arms and Armor from Iran, the Bronze Age to the End of the Qajar period. Both of these um, Shamshirs are depicted there, they are measured, and also the other um, items I sh I sh I've shown you that are there, you can go and uh, take a look at them. Well, let me just uh, stop that here, stop sharing. And at the end, I would like to uh, thank you for uh, coming to our channel and uh, to my channel and listening to me. And you have been great viewers. I would like to thank you for making this channel grow because this way I can contribute more. I will uh, can communicate with you more. And thank you for supporting my research by buying my books. And this is really, really something I really appreciate, especially in these times where we have the feeling that many people say, oh, well, books are not, read, uh, not being used anymore, read anymore. I still believe in the virtue of writing print books because uh, I think nothing beats um, print books. This is extremely important to take into consideration that these are important things to have and um, well to cherish. That being said, um, thank you very much and uh, I wish all of you a nice day and well, all the best for everyone. Thank you very much.